So we are at the Japanese garden at Hillwood Estate and you are gonna be taking us through this. It, what's the history behind this garden? When Marjorie Post, our founder, bought the property in 1955, there was already an Asian-inspired garden here. So, of course, you know, she did uh, really what I would think a very practical thing. Um, and also, I think she, there were things she liked about the property. She, knows she didn't tear everything down. She just made it her own, of course, like what every homeowner, new homeowner wants to do. So. Uh, she took this garden and um, she hired Shogo Maeda, a, Lance, a Japanese American landscape architect, to really make it her own. Of yeah, course. and probably so, like flesh it out a little bit. Yeah, so yeah. So you're working with mm -hmm. a lot of topography here, which is very nice. Should we walk down into it? Yeah. yeah. And the garden is really like a uh, Japanese hillside, but in miniature. Hmm. And there are, uh, yeah, three. <laughs> three kind of landing areas. So this is the first pool. You know, it, the idea is that the water feature starts like a spring uh, popping up out of the ground and coming down to these uh, little different ponds. So here we have the wonderful millstones that guests can walk across. So you can walk across Absolutely, That's yes. Great. Yeah, it's really meant uh, to be a strolling garden. Yeah. So we encourage people, yeah, to walk through and, and enjoy the space. And that is one of the styles of Japanese gardens is a strolling garden, right? Because some of them are just a sit and look kind of yes. garden. And there's others that are just meant for a very slow stroll through. Yes, Yeah. for sure. Now this is a lot of water movement actually it's surprising because it's you really hear a lot of that water movement between the the water coming down in the waterfall plus the little spigots coming out you oh know? for sure yeah it's over ten thousand gallons so yeah there is quite a bit and yes you already noticed uh, the bronze fish which mm -hmm. i think is a, a a very lovely feature and those are actually like if you get into the details of how the pond works they're actually part of the filtration system what was the landscaping like here did they go with any kind of native plants or is this ones that you would typically see in a japanese garden in japan so one of the things that shoga maeda was really known for is to meld american with japanese and that's why we really call it the japanese style garden because it's really not one or the other but everything really meshed together so so you'll see some traditional plants of course you know we have the wonderful uh, weeping cherry which uh, is in bloom peak bloom yeah. right now <laughs> that's uh, absolutely I was so yep. afraid coming down here that we wouldn't get to see a lot of flowers and stuff but mm -hmm. it, well it was perfect timing perfect for the cherries timing for both orchids and <laughs> cherries and magnolias at that yes But something else that's a little probably atypical of a, of a Japanese style, uh, Japanese garden is the, the amount of statuary, right? Um, she just added on, people would give her things. Actually, this is um, Hote, uh, the God of Happiness. And so her Marjorie Post niece gave that to her in the 1960s. So it kind of just grew and, and right. uh, became whatever uh, she wanted. So. Right. So there's probably like more statues than what you would typically yeah, see in a yeah. Japanese style. Mm -hmm.
the waterway is just absolutely fantastic. So was there water here in the Asian inspired garden before she arrived, do you know? They did, yes. Okay. There was a pond down at the bottom, mm -hmm. but really everything was redone well, and it's moved around. So. Nice that he worked with the slope. You oh. know, some people would be like fearful of that, but yes. to actually just go with it, you know? <laughs> What would be a, a Japanese garden without the bridges? So exactly, yeah, we have these wonderful wooden bridges. And so, my understanding of a number of these bridges is that you're meant to walk over them and kind of struggle a little bit. It's almost like a metaphor of life struggle yes, of like yes. going up the because it's mm -hmm. added like a slightly uncomfortable it is. That, slope, you know, up absolutely. and down. Absolutely, I think it. Too, we would talk about you making you mindful right. too of being being in the moment. Right. It's all those subtle natures in Japanese design, garden design, even in the tea house, how you actually have to yeah. bend down in order yeah, to yeah. be able to get in. Other people would be like, the door is not tall enough, but yeah. that is the point of actually is being able mm -hmm. to bow down as you're going into and, and venerate, think about your life, and of course. What would it be without Japanese maples? Uh, of course, not, yes. Not in uh, leaf yet, but... No, but uh, yeah, on their way. Yeah. And then, too, we have the gate. But where it might be in, at the entrance, this actually is uh, like the destination uh, here in the garden. Right. Uh, getting, to, getting to the gate. And, of course, yes, wonderful view of the uh, waterfall. Yeah, this is kind of the peak of the, the full waterfall. Well, now I know why it's so loud. I mean, this is a pretty large waterfall. Yeah. So uh, uh, Shogamaite was a really a master, and um, this, this the whole garden has more than 400 rocks, and some of them were really placed uh, to do just what you were talking about, uh, change how fast the water runs, what it sounds like. There's splashing rocks and dividing rocks. Mm -hmm. It's really lovely. And so this is the gate. Does this go out of the garden or how, where does it lead to from so there? So really, it's, it's, this is always very interesting because it's really a grand staircase. Uh -huh. Then when you go down, you, um, it goes to the lawn. Oh, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> and I see also that you brought in a lot of, quite a lot of bamboo to kind of yeah, buffer that the was, zone. Yes. That was part of the design, you know. Mm -hmm. Now we talk about, you know, invasive plants, and exactly. it's really, an, uh, you know, uh, uh, something we're really taking in consideration because we're a 1950s garden. So, you know, it was really based on the aesthetic now what's and the, the invasive, yeah. you know, our yeah. invasive plants. We have lots of English ivy, but we're uh, very fortunate because Marjorie Post. I always say she wasn't like a plants person like George Washington. Mm -hmm. She didn't, you know, we don't have records of exactly what went where. Mm -hmm. So we work by overall feel. Mm -hmm. So we can take those areas where the invasive plants are really not necessary, and we can uh, just go by the theme from the photos and just kind of keep to the aesthetic, but not those specific plants. Yeah. So we are adding quite a few natives into the garden. What are some of the conifers that you have here? Yes, a wide variety of pines. Uh, yeah, white pine, yeah. Uh, the black pine. Which I often uh -huh. see that kind of crooked nature yes. is actually very coveted in a Japanese garden. That whole idea of it being windswept. Yes. Yes, that's the idea. And all, yeah, all the textures. Some Pakistandra. Yep, yeah. yeah. And, but heavy azaleas, because we are really a spring and fall garden, but now we work hard to make it all season. But Marjorie Post was really here at spring and fall. Uh, we kind of call it her home base. So like in the summer, she would have gone up to the Adirondacks and spent at Camp Topridge and then gone down to Florida uh, in the winter. Hmm. So um, yeah, so lots of azaleas throughout the whole property. Yeah, a little epimedium. I was looking at those. Yeah, aren't they like sweet? Yeah, they like a little buttery color. Yeah. The, the sulfur one. Really mm -hmm. nice ground cover as well. Not, oh, not really? our native plants, but beautiful ground cover in, in shady areas. Yes. You know, there's a lot that you could do because instead of like a Japanese Pakistandra, you could do like the, the our native? Allegheny. Yeah, Absolutely, the native yes. 
So really do, we do pinpoint, and like this year we have like uh, four targeted areas, other parts of the gardens where, yeah, yeah we'll be taking that out. And, and you could supplement, yep. yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is the wonderful stone bridge you're gonna go I over right it. now. I love it, it's fantastic. What an experience, because it's almost like slightly exhilarating yeah. when you hear the water. Yeah. It also just shows you how much surface area and interest you could do on just a hillside, a slope yeah, yeah. side. Yeah. I mean, if you had access to like over 400 plus pounds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and a world-class landscape architect, it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't hurt. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. This is just a delightful tour. I always love seeing Japanese gardens or Japanese style gardens and phenomenal, phenomenal experience and just in time for the cherry bloom. Yeah, perfect time. Well, yeah. it was a pleasure. Thank you for coming. Thank you. <laughs> if you're interested in the Orchid Conservatory Tour at Hillwood Estate, then tune in to an upcoming episode on our sister channel at Plant One On Me. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to the channel. And I'd like to give a shout out to all of our members of this channel who provide extra support to help enable these videos. You can find out the perks of becoming a member on our YouTube channel page. In the meantime, thank you so much and we'll see you in the next episode.